This video will explain divide and contrast, self-supervised learning from uncurated data. The motivating problem is that we have a heavy tailed class distribution for in the wild unlabeled data sets. The promise of this self-supervised learning idea is that we can take these unlabeled data sets like such as Facebook's SEER algorithm that takes a billion images off of Instagram or maybe we have a self-driving car that drives around and collects all these image frames or we use this uh, YouTube uh, frames collection of 100 million frames from YouTube videos or all sorts of ways that we can collect these massive unlabeled image data sets but these real unlabeled data sets have a heavy tail distribution of classes. So as a random example, say trucks appear very rarely in the data set. And further, we want to have some kind of semantic uh, similarity within these contrasted learning assignments. So when we're doing uh, positive negative dissimilarity, we want there to be some kind of, uh, you know, positive negative similarity. We don't want them to be totally different objects. So we're going to use insights from clustering and unsupervised learning in order to cluster the representations in order to have more fine grained positive negative assignments in these large unlabeled data sets. So that brings us to the idea of the divide and contrast algorithm for self supervised learning with heavy tailed in the wild unlabeled data. So the first step of the algorithm is to train a base contrast of learning model on all of the data. So we take all the training images and we just do the same kind of uh, positive negative encodings through the use of data augmentation and a framework that's very similar to Bootstrap Your Own Latent, and we'll get into the details of that later. But once you do that, you have a representation of all the data. So once we have this representation of all of the original unlabeled data, we're gonna apply k-means clustering. K-means clustering is where we have these centroids, we compute the distance of the centroids, recompute the centroids, then compute the distance of the centroids, and so on, this iterative algorithm. We're finding the k uh, centroid assignments for k clusters of our data. So now that we have these clusters of the data shown as the purple, orange, red, blue, and green, we're going to train an expert model on each of these subsets. So this is the idea of having a more uh, semantically similar local batch for contrastive learning. Originally we had a billion training images and now we divide it into K clusters and train these subset models on each of these uh, clusters that have more uh, they have more semantic similarity because they share similar representations in the space and obviously the quality of the pretext task the first you know encoding representation learning algorithm is going to have a huge impact on how semantically similar these clusters are so we have each of these clusters of data say 1 billion images have been filtered to sets of 100 million or 10 million and so on and now we're going to train an expert model on each of these subsets so these could be just different types of dog breeds different cats that kind of example and we're going to train still with the contrastive learning algorithm the same uh, task for representation learning is used to train these expert models. But then the problem is we don't want to have a hundred different expert models, so we want to distill it into a single model. So the task for knowledge distillation is going to be to have one model that uses a regression loss to predict the representation of these images that were produced by the expert models. So say we take a new image and it was uh, represented by the orange cluster, our distillation model is going to try to predict the representation that the orange cluster produced for this orange cluster assignment image. And it's going to use a regression loss in order to do that. So overall, this is the framework of having these local expert models, and then we distill it into one base model that will be, you know, our final representation of the data through the use of this three stage pipeline. For stages one and two of the divide and contrast algorithm, the authors propose the MoClear design, which is an extension to SimClear MoCo and shown in this diagram, the bootstrap your own latent framework. So some details about Bootstrap Your Own Latent, we take our input images, we pass them through two different data augmentation transformations, and then we try to use the online network to predict the representation of the target network, and the target network is a running average of the parameters of the online network. So it has this uh, lagging momentum constant where you say take uh, 0.99 times these parameters plus the parameters of the previous iteration and so on as you update the online network and then keep this running average which is the target network and this is this momentum encoder idea is common in uh, Mo MoCo and Bootstrap Your Own Lane. So some details, uh, they apply this momentum encoder on the second view, that's how they generate the Z prime that's uh, predicted, except in this case, they're not going to use, this is Bootstrap Your Own Latent, where they use a regression loss to predict the representation of the target network from the representation of the online network, and it has this head, prediction head. It's common to see these separations of representation, projection, prediction head with these contrastive self-supervised learning designs. But So they're getting away from this. They're going to use a contrastive loss instead of the mean squared uh, regression loss. Uh, they're going to double the size of the projection head in the out, uh, output layer. So the projection head goes up to 4,096 hidden units and then into a representation vector of 256. And they also have a symmetry in the loss where they are going to buy uh, T and T prime go this way and then T prime T go this way as well. 
Uh, and then also there you can use a batch size of uh, 4096, which I think is an interesting detail because obviously that's a very large batch size for most of these deep learning training pipelines. And then with unlike MoCo, they're not going to use a memory buffer. So MoClear is a slight change to these SimClear MoCo, bootstrap your own latent. I don't expect it to have too much of a performance impact, but that's the algorithm that's used for representation learning in uh, step one. And then you cluster the representations and then you use that same MoClear algorithm on each of these subsets to train the expert models in step two. So this results table is comparing the extensions in MoClear compared to Bootstrap Your Own Latent, MoCo version 3, SimClear version 2, and SimClear, showing that these extensions that we discussed in this previous slide, these batch size of 4096, remove the predictor head and have a contrastive loss instead of the regression thing, double the size, the symmetry and the loss, and th th this results in this uh, performance over SimClear, Bootstrap Your Own Latent, and the top five. So just showing this uh, mo clear, which is just one part, which is the part in stage one and two, not the overall framework of divide and contrast, just the mo clear extension to the pretext contrast of learning framework. So then we have the third stage of divide and contrast, which is a knowledge distillation regression loss. So compared to these knowledge distillation frameworks that uh, predict this soft label categorical distribution, we have a regression, or let's say like you have a cross entropy comparing the uh, output from the teacher network with the student network and so on, we have a regression loss where we're directly predicting the representation that came out of one of these expert models. So we see a similar architecture. Again, the MLP projection head goes up to 4096 and then into a representation vector of 256. We append this regression head to our distillation model that's going to predict the output from the expert model, L2 norm on the uh, vector representations, and mean squared error regression loss to the distillation model. So putting it all together, these are some of the loss functions that we're using in the divide and divide contrast algorithm. This is the noise contrastive loss that's used in the contrastive learning steps uh, one and two, where we have the, uh, the top term, the similarity between the positive pairs, normalized by the positive pair similarity, plus the similarity with all the other samples from J in the batch, discount, discounting uh, I. So the similarity with J as you look through the entire batch, and this is the noise contrastive estimation loss. So then we have this regression loss. So the first thing, and I think this is done as a normalization term, kind of like a sanity check for the model, it has to predict the output of the base network as well. So as you see the distillation head, this is considered um, R sub B, the output of the base network as of the representation, and we have this regression head. So the regression head is going to also predict its own representation from this previous step, as far as I hope that I'm understanding that correctly. And then we have the regression loss on the expert model the, that is used with the cluster assignment K. So the cluster assignment K says, you know, this image has been clustered to belong to the orange batch in our original uh, cluster assignments. It belongs to the orange batch. It belongs to the orange batch. So we look at the uh, the expert orange model, and then we have the regression to that uh, Z sub K of that expert model. So here we have the results of the divide and contrast algorithm compared to bootstrap your own latent and just using the MoClear algorithm as you measure the epochs of pre-training and then the resulting top one image net accuracy with a linear evaluation of the representation. So this is where you take the output, that 256 dimensional vector, and then you add a linear classification layer without any nonlinear projections like the ReLU activation and ideas like that. So this is showing that it benefits from more pre-training and an exciting improvement over these previous contrastive learning frameworks. So an important detail of the divide and contrast algorithm and a hyperparameter that arises from this is how many epochs to have in each of these three stages. So we have the base epoch, which we form our original representation and then do our k-means clustering. Then we send these clusters to each of the experts and then we see how many uh, epochs we're training these for. And this, this could be parallelized. So if we have five clusters, we can send it to five machines, 10 clusters, 10 machines, and so on. So it's this one would be easily uh, parallelized. And then we have our distillation epochs, how many epochs we spend trying to predict that regression head. So they form these two different schedules, different ways of allocating the uh, computation in each of these different stages of the divide and contrast algorithm. So chopping up the epoch allocation to each of these three stages is also very important for comparing it with say, just solely doing MoClear, solely doing Bootstrap Your Own Latent without uh, you know having these intermediate stage one, stage two, and stage three with respect to the computation count. So for a fixed amount of epoch budget, we see that the DNC algorithm improves over these other two algorithms just as you just um, keep training on MoClear or Bootstrap Your Own Latent uh, using ResNet 50 architectures and then also scaling it up to uh, this ResNet 200, which I imagine is the width multiplier with respect to the uh, number of features in each of the layers of the, the feature maps. And then a huge improvement over just doing MoClear, which is basically the same idea as Bootstrap Your Own Latent, SimClear, and MoCo, which is the same idea. Without this intermediate algorithmic structure of the divine, divide and contrast stage one cluster expert models and then distillation. So, Interesting that they you know show that across these different uh, epoch allocations you have 
increased performance. And to further validate the experiments, here are some uh, transfer tasks. These are different image classification data sets from uh, image, uh, these are the uh, pre-training data sets, ImageNet, YFCC 100 million, and JFT 300 million, and then evaluated on these different Food 101, CIFAR 10, BirdSnap, and so on, these different uh, visual domains or you know class label subsets for image classification. And then we also have the same kind of study with object detection, instant segmentation, and depth estimation, further showing the, uh, the quality of these representations of visual data that's been learned through this self-supervised representation learning algorithm. So this is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting results presented in the paper. They're drilling into this idea of whether these local clusters of semantically similar objects, like say this canine subset of ImageNet, which apparently has 130 classes of canine subsets in the ImageNet labels, but whether these locally relevant subsets help with the representation learning for these local classes, with the idea being that we have these heavy tail distributions for in the wild unlabeled data sets. So what this, is a, uh, this, this experiment is reporting is they have this subset of the canine subset, so imagine dogs, wolves, foxes, maybe that, those kinds of things, animals, and they're, um, and they're comparing the performance between training SimClear, BYL, or again that MoClear, which just has these subtle architectural design changes to these other algorithms, Comparing it with the full data set, all the ImageNet labels, compared to training on just the canine subset. So training on just the canine, and then it's evaluated on the canine subset as well. So the top one accuracy evaluated on the canine subset. So we have Epochs 200 of the full data achieves 68.7 compared to 77.5. So it's clearly learning better representations through contrastive learning with a locally relevant subset. And then, but further training does seem to uh, remedy this a little bit. So it would be interesting to see how this scales further. But Either, either way, this is showing the importance of having these local subsets and this overall procedure of the three stages of clustering, of representation learning, clustering, and expert model training, and then distillation into one overall base model. Here are some more results presented showing that divide and contrast continues to improve with more training, 1,000 to 3,000 epochs, whereas Bootstrap Your Own Latent actually de decreases in performance and MoClear by itself doesn't increase that much, but divide and contrast seems to continue to improve. And then uh, the results, I'm not exactly sure how this is evaluated, but I imagine you take the representation and then you do some kind of supervised learning with the available labels. Maybe that's all you do, or maybe it's uh, some kind of semi-supervised learning. I'm not exactly sure how this is evaluated, but again, reporting that divide and contrast is reporting higher performance in this uh, semi-supervised evaluation setting of these representations compared to Barlow Twins, MoClear by itself, so the suave clustering, which is another strategy for using clustering in contrastive self-supervised learning, and bootstrap your own latent and SimClear. So then we have some important ablations of the algorithm. This table is showing the importance of having these local partitions for the experts that are then used to distill the model. Compared to maybe this just being some kind of model bias ensemble regularization thing, compared to the local partitions and the k-means clustering being what's actually contributing to the performance gain. So they're comparing it with, say, using the entire data set to, uh, to train the uh, expert models or just having random partitions. And we see random partitions performs horribly and the, or much worse than the other two and the local partition does indeed lead to the performance boost in this algorithm and then we also see this other ablation of uh, using the, the knowledge installation step of whether you're predicting the base model that r sub b term just the local so just the base model just the local experts and then making sure you're using the center crop augmentation which is which is how the image is processed to the uh, feature encoder network. So to take a high level uh, step back, in addition to this idea of heavy tail distributions and accounting for class imbalance and self-supervised learning, it's interesting to see the use of clustering and self-supervised learning. Clustering is kind of the, the best algorithm in unsupervised learning where we have these k-means clustering, trying to discover structure in unlabeled data or structure in our representations of data as we pass them through these deep neural networks. And we even do things like an image net, we would have clustering, say, k-nearest neighbors on those representations for classifiers, all sorts of things where you can use clustering to kind of uh, add some structure to the representation learning. Maybe it would be interesting to see like graph structured representations that are guided with this clustering, like the hierarchical clustering algorithm, and maybe that could have some bridge with the neural structured learning and all these kinds of ideas for self-supervised learning. But here are some other ideas, the suave clustering algorithm. In suave, what they use is they have this code book for the clusters and they predict the cluster of the augmented view of the image. And then we have uh, scan, this is this paper, uh, learning to classify images without labels where you have this uh, k-nearest neighbor assignment and you try to have similar logic predictions. So it's also similar to see uh, consistency on the representations and then also the logits as they get mapped out to say like a 10 class logit vector compared to this 256 uh, dimensional representation vector. So it's common to say in papers like co-match or these papers that apply different losses to the representation than the logits as a high level overview of scan using this clustering strategy as well. 
So if you're curious further in this idea of uh, applying clustering and this unsupervised structured learning to self-supervised contrastive learning, I highly recommend watching this uh, video from Yana Kilcher on learning to classify images without labels, the scan algorithm, a really interesting idea that I think has a large intersection, suave, divide and contrast, and the scan algorithm in this idea of adding cluster structure to self-supervised learning. If you prefer to learn hands-on, here's a Keras code example implementation of semantic image clustering. This is amazing. This is showing th these Keras code examples really have cutting edge uh, implementations of these algorithms, which is really exciting. So this is implementing the scan algorithm to do this kind of uh, classification without image labels through the use of this uh, cluster consistency, this idea of adding the cluster structure again. And here is a code example if you prefer to learn this way compared to uh, you know, just reading the papers and hearing explanations of it. So in addition to the clustering structure, the other idea is this heavy tail distribution thing where we want to account for these local subsets that might account for these um, classes in our self-supervised learning data that don't appear that frequently and therefore they need more structure with their loss function. So this other paper is self-damaging contrastive learning is building on this paper, what do compressed neural networks forget? And also digging into this idea of class imbalance and self-supervised learning and how these prune models help provide more signal for finding these long tail, poorly memorized samples to add more uh, structure to the class distribution in the representations for self-supervised learning. Thank you so much for watching this explanation of divide and contrast, a very interesting new algorithm for self-supervised contrastive learning. If you think I've made any mistakes in the video or you have any uh, questions, please leave a comment. Uh, please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.